The story I'm going to read to you today is called Stone Age and Bone Age. And if we look at the back on the blurb, it says, Travel back in time for an amazing Stone Age adventure. Learn to shape flints, carve bones and tickle trout. Join in a mammoth hunt and wild dances in the flickering torchlight. Discover for yourself just how clever our Stone Age ancestors were. So what are ancestors? I wonder if you can find out what that word means. Ancestors are the people that lived before us. Okay, the author of this book is Nick Manning and Brita Grunstrom. Okay, so let's see what happens in this book. So although it might be a story, it might give us some interesting facts about life in the Stone Age. Listen, water dripping, wind moaning, you've woken up in a dark cave. No light switch, no window. Feel your way towards the sound, voices. Can you imagine waking up to no light switch in a dark cave? This story happened 12,000 years ago, when people used stone, bone, wood and animal skin to make everything. Can you imagine a life without plastic, polystyrene, all the throwaway things that we use and take for granted today? Outside, there's a Stone Age family. Mums, dads, grands, granddads, aunties, uncles, cousins, all getting ready to go hunting, all getting ready to gather wild food can you imagine having no supermarkets or shops? You have to find all of your food out in the wild. People lived in large family groups back then. It was safer that way and easier to find food. You go too. Let them show you where to gather seeds and berries, where to find the best honey and where to dig for beetle grubs. Here you can see the bird's egg. There were no shops in these days. People hadn't even found out how to grow things. Food had to be hunted and gathered from the wild. So they ate nuts and berries and they had to go out and find them. You go too. Hunt the lake for fish and water birds. Learn how to paddle a dugout canoe. A dugout canoe was a log hollowed out with fire and stone tools. Stone Age people probably also used skin canoes and rafts. And here it is, so imagine this canoe originally was a tree trunk and they've hollowed out the inside to make it into a canoe so that they can go fishing. Or try to tickle a trout in fast flowing streams. Flip them on the bank with just a flick of your wrist. Salmon and trout were either tickled or harpooned as they gathered to lay their eggs. Sun-dried fish would keep all winter. Can you imagine trying to put your hand very, very carefully underneath the fish and tickle it and then flip it out of the water? Make tricky traps and track wild animals. Hunting and trapping animals may seem cruel now, but it was a matter of survival then. A dreadful trap is a heavy log balanced like this. A pitfall trap is a hole in the ground covered with sticks or grass. So what they would do is dig a hole and then they would cover it with sticks and grass and then hopefully an animal would walk across the trap and fall in and they would trap it and catch it. What's this? An ambush? Shh, I heard woolly mammoths and they're getting closer. Shh, now jump and chase them. Stone Age, Bone Age, food for a month. Just one mammoth would feed a Stone Age family for weeks. Nothing was wasted. Meat and fat were eaten. The skin was used for keeping warm. Tusks and bones were used for tools, carvings and fuel for the fire. Can you imagine trying to catch a big woolly mammoth just with a spear? Would you treasure a necklace of animal's teeth or a pendant shaped like a flying bird? Stone Age, Bone Age, you're one of the family now. Some, 
Stone Age people felt happy and sad, just like we do. Many birds fly away in winter and come back in the spring. The bird pendant may have reminded people that life always begins again. And here they are with their teak necklaces. Back at camp, learn the art of napping flint or skinning a deer. Learn how to carve bone and antler. You can even make skin clothes. Hardly anyone can do these things today, but just about everyone knew how to do them then. Flint was the most useful stone. It could be chipped into sharp knives and spears. And here's a piece of flint that they've made into a sharp point by chipping away at it so that they can make their spears. The sun's going down. Quick, light a fire. It keeps wild beasts away. Quick, light a fire. It cooks our food. Eat with your fingers. It's a Stone Age barbecue. Just don't forget, there was no plates and pots and knives and forks then. There were no matches in those days. Fire was made by rubbing sticks together or striking a spark with a flint. Animal bones and other food remains, like nutshells, are sometimes found where prehistoric people lived. And they would all sit round the fire at night to keep warm and to cook their food. Now it's time to visit the magic place. Deep in the cave, by its small, smoky torchlight, the walls come alive. Heartbeat, drumbeat, feeling a bit nervous now going into the dark cave. Prehistoric cave art has been found all over the world. Perhaps people thought their paintings gave them magic powers over the animals they hunted. And here you can see some cave paintings on the walls. And this, by doing these paintings, it tells us about things that were around in the past life. Stone Age, Bone Age, what a clever age. Stamp like a stag, strut like a bird. Growl like a bear, Stone Age, Bone Age, howl like a wolf. And you see them making all the shapes and the wall of the shadows. Stone Age, Bone Age, what a clever age. The Stone Age describes a time when people used stone to make their tools before they learned how to use metals like bronze and iron. The Stone Age is divided into many different periods. A family life in a period we call the Upper Paleolithic, about 12,000 years ago. And we've just learnt about the Paleolithic Age, haven't we, in our topic work. It is difficult to say when the Stone Age began and ended. The very first people used stone tools over 2 million years ago, and a few people began to make metal tools about 7,000 years ago. The Stone Age did not end suddenly, but slowly, over thousands of years, as more and more people learned how to use metal. In some faraway places, people still use stone tools today. There were some interesting facts in that book, isn't there? Although it was put into a kind of story, it was actually giving us some of our history, wasn't it? and telling us some facts which would help us in our topic learning too. So I hope you enjoyed it.